Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, today has been such an exciting day. I just really want to thank ACS for the recognition. And again, it's just such an honor and pleasure to be with, with such a talented group. Um, I was just thinking the last time I think I received such type of press and um, such an amazing audience was probably when I was in seventh grade when I had to give a cello recital. <laughs> so like today, I'm not going to be giving a, a performance with my cello, but I'll be giving a talk. Um, and the title of my talk is Chemistry at the Interface, um, which is a key theme of, in not only my work, but also my life too as well. Uh, so my story starts actually in Chicago, and that's where I was born. And my father, being very career-oriented, actually moved our family several times before we ended up settling in uh, California. So in fact, before the age of six, we had lived in four different states already. Um, and so growing up, the key interface um, uh, in my life was actually my older sister. And uh, my sister has a very different personality for me, different viewpoints. So I think she basically was a test bed for me to um, try to reconcile different viewpoints. And actually, that's kind of what I joke about feeds into my mentality and approach into my scientific career. So the approaches I took into my scientific career has always been keeping an open mind, um, which is very important. Uh, leveraging multidisciplinary approaches towards problem solving, and of course, connecting with new people and places too as well. So as I entered my undergraduate career at UCLA, I, I really appreciated the diversity that chemistry was able to afford me. I was lucky to be able to work in an inorganic laboratory and also a synthetic organic laboratory. And in uh, pursuing my career further to graduate school, what I, what I was really looking for was the freedom to work in different projects in different areas. And I was very fortunate to work with um, Professor Joe Hupp and also Professor Tobin uh, uh, Marks, whom um, I was co-advised by, which really at that stage I think was um, a pretty unique uh, situation. So I was really appreciative of that. And also, I was able to collaborate closely with Professor Chad Merkin and his group. And, and, and um, through those different collaborations and interactions, I felt it was a very enriching experience and also uh, created at a very fast-paced environment, too, as well. So after I finished my graduate work, I wanted to make an impact in society, um, namely going to industry. And I started a position at Dow uh, Chemical. And though that, that time was very brief, it opened up um, the electronic materials world to me and also opened up an opportunity to start um, at my current company, Cabot Microelectronics Corporation. So at Cabot Microelectronics Corporations, we feed into the semiconductor industry. And as I will highlight in today's talk, um, the the uh, fabrication of semiconductor devices is actually quite complex. And what CMP really enables, or chemical mechanical planarization, what that really enables is uh, the manufacture of faster, um, more efficient, and affordable devices, and is a critical piece of this process. So does anyone uh, in the audience have an iPhone? Great. I'm very happy to hear because that actually is uh, correlated to how much money we make at Cabot Microelectronics, so it's important for my job. Um, I don't know if you know this, but our products at Cabot Microelectronics has actually touched all your key components in your cell phone. So without the technology we provide, you would not have your devices. Uh, so who are we? Uh, we are the number one supplier of CMP slurries, uh, the leading technology company for this as well, and also the number two global suppliers of CMP polishing pads. Uh, so let's take a closer look uh, on what is the CMP process. So this is a diagram showing uh, the CMP uh, process, and you can see um, 
Under the carrier, you have your silicon wafer sub substrate. This is actually just placed face down directly onto your polishing pad and is rotated. And as this is rotated, you have a continual feed of slurry flowing between your wafer and pad surface. Um, the silicon wafer pad can be comprised of hundreds of different devices um, and, and chips. And each chip is composed of transistors and insulator and uh, um, other components. And in fact, if you look at a square millimeter, you could have 100 million transistors in, in that small area. And so what we're doing is we're really trying to control the polishing process at the Engstrom level. And this requires actually a lot of chemistry and a lot of input um, and, and thought in terms of how we design these slurries to selectively polish materials to achieve the final topography performance. So here you could just see a zoom in image of the, the pad in the slurry. Um, and then the next slide, let me see, is a different viewpoint. Where you can see on the right here is actually the wafer being polished and the slurry flowing underneath. So it's quite remarkable what we can achieve in a 30 to 60 second polish. So if we're polishing a 300 millimeter wafer, what we're trying to usually target is to get the uniformity down of the film thickness down to 300 angstroms. So if you think about that scale, an analogy would be, okay, if we wanna polish and planarize the United States, San Diego from Portland, Maine is about 3,000 miles. If we want to planarize the mountains, um, the forests, the oceans and make a new flat surface, actually that level of uniformity is actually only one and a half feet, right? And so we're able to do that, translate that down to that um, semiconductor device to get really smooth surface. So then we could build additional layers through lithography, deposition and etch and build your integrated circuit, which you use in your phone today. So as we go into more sophisticated devices, um, more advanced types of uh, circuit de designs, what we have to do at Cabot is to be uh, able to provide new innovation, innovative solutions uh, directly to our customers in a timely manner. So the scheme on the right shows a very simple scheme of the integrated circuit, where in this case you have a dielectric material that is deposited onto, onto your, um, uh, your feature. And you have an oxide CMP step to remove the oxide and stop on nitride. And then you can have a sub subsequent clean step to further uh, refine the surface. And this process repeats itself to manufacture the integrated circuit. So taking a closer look of the slurry makeup, um, it's actually quite complex, right? So um, we're looking um, at uh, surface chemistry, physical characteristics, uh, and material uh, type. And that all goes into trying to control the slurry flow dynamics between the wafer and the pad interface and controlling the reactivity at the nanometer scale um, directly on the wafer substrate, right? So here you can see just um, a snapshot of the different types of particles that we, we use in the slurry design. And you can see that they are very quite diverse, right? And so the type of materials and particles we, uh, we select goes directly into is what we wanna achieve in terms of our final polishing performance. So this is something that I never really appreciate in graduate school. Uh, in industry, what we're trying to do is really bring this nanoparticle chemistry, scale it reproducibly on the ton scale. And what that really means is that we have to have a really good idea of our surface chemistry. So our particles have to be really well-designed nanoparticle compositions, um, which we investigate into. Now taking a look into our slurry chemistry, our slurry chemistry also has to have a very um, specific selection and that also feeds into the final performance. 
Uh, Frank, earlier in this morning, did a nice job highlighting uh, um, how different simple yet elegant modifications of polymer chemistry can lead to very unique physical properties. And that is a key uh, piece of what we do. We look at a very different um, unique chemistries to drive into how can we control that polishing um, with angstrom level precision at that interface. Yeah, so here are just some different polishing schemes. We use a variety of different chemistries and materials to feed into the development of our slurry and pad technologies. So um, I also want to thank uh, Paula Hammond too as well. Her talk really resonated with me. Um, I would like to echo the message of keeping, a, um, the importance of keeping an open mind and open heart, um, and also to continue to feed into the long-term vision. Uh, retrospectively thinking, um, the work and the success that I have um, um, achieved through the years um, would not have been possible without the strong support and network of uh, friends, colleagues, and, and mentors. So I really want to thank them. Um, my uh, academic advisors um, at Northwestern and at UCLA, key collaborators, um, and in particular also um, uh, my mentors at CMC and colleagues um, from different areas that I've worked with. Um, it's really through the teamwork um, of the people that I work through that have really um, um, helped me to push the science for forward and also the project forward too as well. So thank you so much. <laughs>